Have you ever had the feeling that you knew what someone was going to say just before he said it? Or have you ever walked into a strange room and had the sensation that you'd been there before? Well, if you have, you've taken a small step beyond. Now watch a giant step. I'm looking for Lieutenant Barnes. That's me. Oh, Mr. Newland, isn't it? Yes. Well, didn't you get my wire last night? No, just the letter. Oh, well, I sent you a wire and told you not to come up. Well, that's strange I didn't get it. The letter said the house was being torn down today. Yeah, well, it's all a mistake. I acted on a, on an impulse. An impulse? All right, Lieutenant. That's kind of normal. We all have impulses. Look, I, uh, I changed my mind, okay? Sure. I'm sorry to have brought you up here for nothing, and I'll be glad to pay your expenses. No, that's not necessary, Lieutenant. I, I kind of enjoyed the ride. Believe me, this is not the first wild goose chase I've been on. Look, if I told you about the house, nobody would believe it. I haven't got a scrap of proof. But you believe it, don't you? Yeah. Do I look like a screwball or something? No, I wouldn't say so. Yeah. I'm one of the most hard-headed guys you'll ever meet. But I don't know. I just don't know. I suppose I owe Graham something. They all think he killed his wife, you know. I guess I gave him a hard time. A cigar? No, thank you. Well, in my book, he had it coming. Fred Graham. <laughs> he and his wife used to live in Bridgeport, and they rented this house here for the summer. She lived here, and he came up on the weekends. They had one of those marriages they were trying to patch up. It had gone sour. They weren't doing a very good job of it, either. I didn't get to know him until later. But the neighbors complained more than once about the fighting that was going on up here. Fred, wait. What now? Go back to the city. I came up for the weekend, remember? Why, so we could fight some more. We didn't fight tonight. You were quiet as a mouse. It was a pleasure. We aren't going to fight any more at all. The neighbors will be glad. I mean it, Fred. I want you to go back to town. We've no reason to fight anymore. People only fight when they're trying to save something. And we've nothing to save. No soap opera, please. We were much luckier than a lot of people. We, we had some wonderful years together. Now the only reason we stay together is that we're afraid to tell each other the truth, that's all. Which is? That it's all over. We don't have one single reason to stay together one minute more. Do you want a divorce? Well, do you? No. Then what? I'm just going into the house. It's a remarkable house. <laughs> Terrible house. We were sitting in the living room this afternoon thinking about how absolutely finished we were. And deciding it was all my fault. No, no, it's nobody's fault. I just fell empty and useless. Just wanted to die. I didn't have one reason to be alive. Not one single reason, not a child. And whose fault is that? Not a husband. I felt like this before. I I've taken a sleeping pill or a drink and slept it off, but... But this afternoon in that house, something happened to me. I... It was like I... Well, I don't know how to explain it. It was as if I could...
translate my mind not wanting to exist into into actuality. I felt empty. As if I were being swallowed up. As, as if I'd, I'd reached the point of zero. I thought if I look into a mirror there, there won't be any reflection. If I stand in front of the light, there, there'll be no shadow. Come on, Ruth, it's late. All I have to do is let go. Really let go. And it would be the end of me. Then I heard your car in the driveway and I thought, wait, give it one more try. Maybe this time it'll be all right. Maybe this time it'll, it'll be like it was before. That was silly. Silly and stupid and boring. Ruth, why don't we stop all this nonsense and try to get along like grown-up people do? I think I preferred it when we had an honest to Pete drag out fight. Didn't you? What are you, three years old or something? Where are you?
Well, Mr. Graham called and asked me to come over to his house at 9.30 that night. What did he say? That his wife had disappeared. Did he have any idea where she'd gone? No, but he had a pretty wild theory. Yes? Well, he was kind of excited and upset, and he didn't seem to make much sense, but... Well, the gist of it seemed to be that she had walked into the house and vanished into thin air. That's what happened, I swear. What did you do then, Lieutenant? Well, I looked the house over from top to bottom. I couldn't find her or her body. Your Honor, I move the phrase, or her body, be stricken from the records. Well, all right, Henry. But again, let me remind you that this is only the preliminary hearing, not a trial, and the prosecutor is allowed a little more leeway to develop his case. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Well, and I checked all the neighbors here in town. Yes? There seemed to have been some trouble in the marriage. A lot of fights. Your Honor, that's hearsay. I have ten witnesses who are willing to go into great detail. Your Honor, that's nobody's business but mine. And I went to Bridgeport, to the apartment. Checked the neighbors there. It was the same story. I have several sworn statements from the neighbors, Henry. What else did you do to try to locate Mrs. Graham besides going through the house? Well, we dragged the lake for three days and couldn't find a body. Sent wires to all her friends and relatives. We sent a missing persons circular throughout the east. And no results? Nothing. With all this evidence of motive piling up on my desk, I went over to the district attorney's office and asked him to swear out an indictment of murder. I didn't kill Ruth. Mr. Graham, you must not do that again. That's the case for the state at this time. Except that I would again like to point out that perhaps people disappear into thin air in India or places like that, but not in good old Connecticut. And I strongly believe that we have enough evidence to hold this man for trial. Based on what's been presented today, the court must find that the prosecution has failed to make any case at all in the important area of corpus delicti. Lacking circumstantial evidence that a crime has been committed, the charge of murder in the first degree is dropped. Does that mean I'm free? Sounds like it, doesn't it? Thank God. Let me urge the prosecutor to continue his investigations and let me assure him that should there be new evidence, this court will be very happy to cooperate to the fullest in the cause of justice. Well, Mr. Graham, you're free. You're absolutely certain I killed her, aren't you? Yep. Didn't you? Nice going, Graham. You know, I gotta admire a job well done, even if it is murder. Now look, you're clean as a whistle. So pack your suitcases, lock your house, go back to Bridgeport and have a big laugh. But let me warn you, if I so much as find one hair of her head, one blood stain, one fingernail, I'm going to get you if it's the last thing I ever do. I'll make it easier on you, Lieutenant. I'm going to stay in that house. I'll bet. I'm going to tear that house apart until I find out what happened to my wife. Uh-huh. I am. I am! I am!
There's nobody home. Go away. Agatha, you can't just lock yourself up in this house forever. Oh, yes, I can. Forever. But everyone feels awful about what happened. Well, that's the... 32 years of my life I gave to that school. I had nothing else, just the school. And then it suddenly dropped me. Just as though all those years didn't mean the thing. Well, you know how the town felt about... I don't want to talk about it. You have to come out sometime. No, I don't. Not ever. Not from this house. But they'll break in and make you come out. For your own good. Let them try. Who are you? Who are you? What's the matter with you? You look terrible. Something... Something crazy just happened. What's the matter? You been drinking? She talked just like Ruth did. Who? Her name was Agatha. What are you talking about? She taught school for 32 years. Who did? What are you doing in front of my house? Well, I like to sit here and hear you tear things apart. I reported you to the re real estate man. That was my duty, you know. But he said you'd posted a bond to take care of all the damages, so it was okay with him. Besides, they're gonna tear this house down and build a highway through here. Look, when are you going to stop this foolishness and tell me how you killed her? You're gonna feel a lot better about it when you do. Leave me alone. I'll never leave you alone. Where would the school records be kept? A city hall. Are they public records? Could I get to them? Yeah. You're a citizen, aren't you? Where have you been? I called your office ten times. I had things to do. You decided to tell all? Ruth wasn't the first. There were two others. Two other what? This house. Something about it. Ruth said it was like... Like being swallowed up. She said, if she looked in a mirror, there wouldn't be any reflection. What are you talking about? I don't care what you think. Read this. It's a very old newspaper, October 24th, 1858. Read what it says about Agatha Dunlap under the headline, Strange Disappearance. All right, what's the name of the game we're playing now? She was fired for being an abolitionist. Yes, right here in New England. So what's that got to do with anything? She lived in this house. And when she had nothing to live for anymore, she locked herself in, and nobody ever saw her again. So? It says so right here in black and white. I don't care if it says it in orange and blue. Nobody locks themselves in a house and then disappears. My wife did. You killed your wife. I didn't. Somebody else disappeared the same way. It mentions him in the same article. Some of the older residents recall that a man named Harrison Fraser, who built the house in 1821, for his bride, only to lose her in childbirth a year later, also closed himself in the house and apparently was never seen again. 
You know, I gotta hand it to you, Graham. You're good. You're very good. What are you going to all this trouble for? What? Is that what gave you the whole idea? What idea? How'd you come by it? By accident? I found it two hours ago! I mean before you killed your wife. You know, this is the screwiest alibi I have ever heard. But like I told you, you don't need it. You really don't need it. You're in the clear. Barnes, listen! I didn't kill my wife! Nobody will ever believe me. Nobody that's sane. I didn't believe Ruth. I thought she was out of her mind. But I didn't kill her. And nobody will believe me. And that's about all, all I had to live for. I guess... I guess this is how Ruth felt. That school teacher and, and the poor guy whose wife died on him. All I had to do was let go and that would be the end of me. That's what Ruth said. He wasn't in the house. He wasn't there. Now, be logical. How can that be? Well, it's happened many times before, Lieutenant. People have simply vanished from ships, airplanes, and houses just like this, without a trace. Look, uh, nobody in town knows about this. They, they all think he took off, so if you do decide to use any of it, to change the name or change the place, change anything, will I you? I understand, sir. Okay. Thank you. Slightest idea. Before Albert Einstein, men were positive that there were only three dimensions. Now we are equally positive that there are only four. That is, until someone discovers a fifth dimension. Or perhaps it's already been discovered by people like Mr. Graham. <laughs> 